All gusts and no glory. I'm not really the kind of guy that, you know, looks for all the attention. I can just kind of go in there, as I like to call it, and just be a roughneck going there and just, you know, be in the trenches and just mix it up. You know, it isn't glamorous, it isn't flashy, and, you know, I bring my lunch pail and my work boots to work and go to work. Who is Evan Neal? Evan Neal is a guy cat from Okeechobee, Florida, small town guy. Uh, grew up with a big family. I'm one of eight kids. I uh, grew up in a two parent household. Our parents always taught us that, you know, your true friends are your siblings and the people that, you know, grew up in the house with you. So I'm very thankful for them. And, you know, I'm just a pretty laid back, just family oriented guy. I love my family. How was it living with uh, with all those siblings at once? It was tough. You know, we only had one bathroom in the house, so it definitely got tough at times. Definitely had to share beds with my brothers and stuff like that. But, you know, looking back on it, man, those are some of the best memories, you know, so I had a great childhood. Did you sleep with your siblings all the way through high school? Uh, yeah, my oldest brother. I was in the bed with my oldest brother. My second oldest brother, I didn't, he slept by himself. I'm not going to tell why he slept by himself, but I slept with my oldest brother. And whenever he left, I got to bed by myself, and then me and my second oldest brother, we just had our separate beds. And then whenever he left, I went to IMG, so I had my own space. Let's talk about your relationship with your father. Um, yeah, I have a great relationship with my dad. Um, you know, he, he just really instilled hard work and what it takes to you just be something out here. Just waking up every morning, seeing him go to work every day, even on the days I could kind of tell that, you know, he probably wasn't having the best day, he didn't really want to do it, but. He had kids to feed, so he got up and did it, you know? So um, I have a ton of respect for my dad. Well, I have, I, my dad was kind of like a drill sergeant. I'm not gonna lie to you, it'd be some nights uh, he'd get off work. He'd wake my brothers and I up out of sleep to do push-ups or go to the basketball court and run suicides. You know, he always just talked about being mentally tough, mentally tough, and he just, you know, just instilled that in all of his kids. What about your relationship with your with your mom? Great relationship, that's my, that's my girl. I love my mom to death. Um, she's really a superhero to me. Um, the way she travels around with all of us and just make sure she just doesn't skip a beat, you know, with any of her kids, pretty much her kids, it's her job. What have you had to kind of overcome in your life, you think, to get to this spot now? I feel like a young guy, um, leaving the house at 15, going to IMG, a boarding school, um, not being in the house, you know, with my family, uh, having to develop social skills that really weren't there yet. And um, then fast forward, going to Alabama, having to work and earn a starting job there. It all kind of just, you know, tested my steel a little bit and hardened my steel. And it really made me into the man that I am now. So let's talk about when you first uh, entered college, you're 390 pounds. Yeah. The big boy. Uh, how did you get to, to be that big? I mean, you're at IMG, like you're at a place that monitors your health and your eating and your sleep schedule. How did you get that big? Going into eighth grade spring football, whenever you can make the transition into high school football, I weighed in at 378. So I was just always a humongous human being, but you know, I, I'm athletic, you know, I can move, so I could, you know, just kind of mask my, my size, but I've always just been huge. You once said, on the field I get possessed, I turn into a dog. You gotta have a dog and you especially to play offensive line. You gotta be a dog, you know, so that's just kind of how I play and it's something that I've always carried with me. What makes the offensive line position so unique? The fact that, you know, it's five guys that have to play together as one. Um, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And uh, regardless of how good you play, it's not going to get noticed. You can have the best game in the world and give up one funky behind sack or something, and the O-line's terrible. It's kind of like it's hot in the summertime, and they, no one notices when the AC is on, but whenever it's off, they're going to notice it, you know? So that's kind of what I enjoy about offensive line. I feel like that's kind of my personality type anyway. What would it mean to you to be the first pick in the draft? It mean everything, uh, coming from a small town like I did, population probably 4,000 people, one high school. You don't, you don't really see people get drafted at all, let alone the number one overall pick. So it would just mean everything to me just to, for the people back home to be able to you know, do good or something like that. Have you thought about that moment when you get drafted and what it'll mean for your family? Yeah, it'll mean everything. I mean, um, it's something that we've been talking about, discussing, dreaming about ever since I was a kid, ever since I strapped up my helmet and, you know, to see it materialize in front of their eyes, I feel like my parents would just be extremely proud, you know, of you know, their hard work, my hard work, you know, all my brothers and sisters would just be extremely proud and happy that, you know, we're gonna be walking into a, a different phase of life.
What are you thinking about right here, kind of like the ability to, to finish here? What's your thought process? You kind of, you're where you're supposed to be, right? Your, yeah. your helmet's across. He's a little bit b below you, but you're massive. That's gonna happen. What's your thought process here as you work to finish this guy? Just keep my feet moving and just uh, probably work my hands inside to try to get that leverage back, but just keep my feet moving and just keep driving. We talk a lot about being able to finish, right? And everyone thinks it's a pancake, but really it's this ability right here, right? It's to go from this position as you're, as you're moving, right? To when mm -hmm. he tries to get off you, he's trying to get back in the play, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. And talk about how you practice this type of finish right here, because that's, that's what finish is. It's not a pancake, it's this sort of play. Just training, just training through the block and just trying to block through the echo of the whistle. When, when you watch film with this player, are you like, are you like, come on, young, hand this ball off. Like, come on, like, like what are we doing here? Like, you, yeah. like, like, like come on, you, look, this is perfectly blocked. Like, throw the ball. I mean, hand the ball off. Yeah, having that, you have that. It, it happens with the RPO offense. You know, I mean, you, I don't, I don't complain whenever you know he pulls it and then he, he throws it for a ninety-yard <laughs> touchdown. You know, so it just kind of comes with it. All right, here we go. This is your, your, uh, you're playing Florida here. Empty protection. Five guys for six. What's your thought process here? Take us through, you walk to the line of scrimmage, your center calls a rip call, whatever he calls to the right. You and the left guard here, to walk me through what you guys are doing. Well, this is a Glenn protection. And over on the left side, we have the big duel. So we're gonna take the most dangerous out of these three right here. And since 11 blitzed, I will have to squeeze, which we will call a lemon because they're the uh, closest threat to the quarterback. And the quarterback knows he's hot off of um, six. So walk us through your, your passing here. This is really, really well done, right? Because you have to be able to do two things at once because if 11 doesn't come, mm -hmm. you obviously, boom. If 11 doesn't show up, you have to go back to six right now. Yeah, my coach taught me to just uh, set vertical and keep my eyes on 11. Um, so that way, if he doesn't come, I have enough depth to get the six. Do you like when teams do this? I love when teams blitz because this is like an easy rep. It's just like, right. I'm just blocking down on a big fatty. <laughs> yeah. All right, just like e easy, easy done, right? Do you, was there a sense before the snap you have? Are you looking for certain keys? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at his demeanor. I, I'm yeah. seeing how he's kind of hunched over. He's kind of, you know, fidgeting with his feet and his, the, the weight uh, of his body is on, the, on his toes. So I kind of sensed that he was going to uh, come and blitz. So this is inside zone right here. So one thing that, that impresses me when, when I watch you run block is you're very patient with your footwork, right? Just one, two, three, get into the block like this. Talk me through your footwork as you anticipate this inside out block here. Yeah, cause I know where the ball's gonna hit, so I'm just basically gonna block him inside out. So my target was his inside shoulder, and I just wanted to kind of just block him out of the plate. Just make sure he couldn't, uh, he didn't beat me across my face inside. How important is knowing angles of where the back is gonna go to your block? It's extremely important. Um, the angle that I took, I took his inside armpit. He wasn't able to, to be a threat to the B gap, and that's where the running back hit.